Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us to talk about Vault Wars GT. We've got Jeff V up in the uh, upper left-hand corner. We've got Joe C on the right side. You have Spencer Miller, your pick grot, and we've got a grot in the chair, Chad. Hey, everyone. Hope y'all are doing well. Can I get some waz in chat? Wah. Wah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a... It's a Kind of, kind of, okay. It's, it's a light wall. So it's a light wall. Well, um, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, what we're planning on doing tonight is just kind of recap Jeff and Joe's experience as they uh, traveled from Austin, Texas, all the way up to Springfield, Missouri for Vault Wars GT. It was a two day, uh, 54 ish player Age of Sigmar GT with the newest General's Handbook. Um, there's some really cool stuff that they did differently than some other events. And I believe, Jeff, Joe, this is y'all's first event outside of Texas? Yep. Is that right? Yeah, first time traveling outside of Texas, or really traveling any appreciable amount of distance for anything. That's awesome. Well, hey, it should be a great show. If you're in chat, don't forget to give us a follow. Um, throw us a like on YouTube. Go follow us on our socials. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to toss those into chat. We'll get them added in as uh, questions into our Q&A section. So I think without further ado, Jeff, do you want to give us kind of a rundown of how Vault Wars operated? Um, just kind of high level awards, that sort of thing. Um, I know we have this nice little infographic that you made, so I figured that'd be a good place to start. Yeah, so like you said, you know, first tournament that we played out of state. Um, really cool thing about Vault Wars is they did a lot of things to like reward more people. So it wasn't just, hey, you need to go 5-0. and oh. They had Highlander, which is basically if you had a list um, that had nine or more different War Scrolls, essentially you could win the Highlander Sword, which was dope. Um, they had Best Tactician, so it was the person that would both get and deny the most battle tactics. Um, they had a Best Table Award. You could bring a table up and people vote around your table. Um, and then your your typical stuff, you know, your, your best... Your best uh, Best general, uh, best in Grand Alliance. Uh, they also had cleanest opponent too, which was really cool. Which was you would vote after every game who played the cleanest game of Warhammer, which I thought was was really cool. And best sports and all the other things. But the coolest thing about it, I thought, was just rewarding more of the field and giving more people uh, chances to like get their name called out and stuff like that. They also had a ton of prize support too, which was really cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we'll definitely get into some photos here in a little bit as a little slideshow as we go through this. Um, I mean, off the top of the bat, Highlander Sword, I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I'm not going to say we should look at doing that for our own events here, but if we can start kidding out our players with an armory, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Uh, well, let's go ahead. Let's get some pictures up, start the slideshow, and let's start some questions. So we're going to kick it off with uh, an easy one, um, what did you play? Uh, Joe, why don't we start with you? What, what was your list, uh, and what was kind of your thought process as as you went into the event as far as uh, an expectation with that list? Yeah, so I played Stormcast, um, Astral Templars. I've been playing that sub-faction pretty much since the books come out. Uh, double unit of Long Strikes, double unit of Grand Hammers, I brought some Vanguard Hunters for the Teleporty shenanigans, Knight and Cantor, uh, Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger, and Lord Imperitant with a Tome. Just wanted to get the Antoran Acolyte Legion in my list. Um, that extra Primal Dice was really awesome and came in clutch through all five games, with the exception of my last game where it, over five rounds, did not generate a single Primal Dice on a three-up which I thought that was a little crazy. <laughs> but it was essentially just MSU Stormcast in Astral Templar, so my Grand Hammers couldn't get stomped, couldn't get roared when they came down to go in for that 7-inch charge. It was play long back, whittle them down to long strike shooting, bring Grand Hammers in for surgical strikes to kind of scalpel out key units or slow down aggressive hammers bracket monsters and that's that's what i played yeah that sounds like an awesome list um joe if you had to give it like a magic the gathering archetype or color 
uh what would you describe that list as oh man um so i would definitely put it with some kind of blue because there wasn't a single person at the gt that enjoyed getting shot by long strikes much like anyone that's ever played against any deck that has blue in it just unfun but i would probably put it blue white control somewhere along that lines yeah yeah i think that'd be a really good place for it mm -hmm. uh jeff how about you what did you play and what what did you expect going in with with that list uh i played corn that's usually what i play uh went with a little bit i mean my list is a little bit different than what the meta pick is so i got unfettered fury of course he's a priest you know he has killer and stinking heal as his prayers he shuts off wards i got scarbrand a slaughter priest uh, he has bronze flash bloodbind uh, Rumgar Ritualist, she has Bronze Flush and Blood Sacrifice. I wanted to double up on Bronze Flush because that's one thing I didn't want to miss out on. Uh, for Battle Line, I took the Claws of Karanak, which are really good. They give me like a six inch pregame move, helps me get early battle tactics. Uh, then I did Flesh Hounds and Blood Reavers. And then um, the big unit that I use is the six Skull Crushers. They're on the two up save with the five up ward after they fight because of the, the sub faction. And then for an additional hammer, I took three Varengard. I gave them uh, two spears, uh, one in source with weapon, and then to round it all out, I took uh, Hex Gorger Skulls. Um, as far as what I expected, I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, playing out of state for the first time, um, wasn't really sure what the meta was, how the people were going to be. It was kind of weird, like, because we always play in Texas, everybody knows everybody. Mm. And uh, it was a little weird, like, sitting around before round one and not having a clue who anybody was so but it was cool it was really neat and uh, had a lot of fun yeah definitely and i think that kind of fish out of water experience is for me just really enjoyable it, it you get to see the community for the first time again right it's the it's your first gt almost in the sense of you're prepped you're ready to go you don't know anyone you don't know how you don't know how they're going to start the event you don't know any of the cool things that they do, they're not going to, you know, yell slambo or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. as a first event, it's, you know, a really good opportunity to, to kind of reset. And I mean, we've talked off air a little bit about this and from what it sounds like y'all, y'all both had a really good time. Yeah. Um, so just could, could we dive into that a little bit more? Uh, Jeff, we'll start with you. So how was it as your first event out of state and, you know, how was the travel? The travel wasn't bad at all um the the way there like it was it was pretty simple like it didn't really seem that long like we talked the whole the whole way about about a lot of different stuff so that was really quick um the community was really cool um very welcoming um the night that we got there we got there friday we left early we ate at what was the name of the place joe we ate lambert's at. cafe yeah where they it's it's the home of the throwable rolls and uh yeah they come out and throw rolls at people which was which was pretty cool um but yeah i like get like all the people really welcoming it was it, and you're right it, it kind of was like my first gt again so it was it was really cool like uh everybody was really nice we got to sit down uh have dinner with them and stuff like that um really really great crew it was it was really awesome that's awesome to hear joe how, how about for you um is there anything that stood out other than getting, you know, beamed in the head with a couple of rolls? <laughs> so it was a really awesome experience. Um, kind of like what you were talking about, fish out of water, first GT experience. It was weird. I've gone to a lot of GTs here in Texas. I go to almost every local here. Not knowing anyone was kind of off-putting in the beginning i was like man i don't know what i should do but then you know you just kind of fall back into it and you're like man okay i need to i need to be open i need to like talk to people i need to introduce myself again and those guys uh there was a bunch of people traveled down from st louis a couple people up from oklahoma all of them were super welcoming they were just ready to kind of jump in have those conversations it was it was awesome. I definitely want to travel outside of Texas again and get a couple more of those. Okay, let's make some new friends. Let's put some more roots down and meet some more people. And like Jeff said, the drive up was nine hours. Um, 
and it's really stark. Once you get out of Texas and into Oklahoma, it goes from like brown dead Texas to just really green. And there's a lot of rivers and quite a few lakes on that road up to Springfield. Yeah, I, I've made that drive myself uh, from actually San Marcos all the way through to St. Louis. And mm -hmm. once you get past Oklahoma, um, past kind of the, the few cities just north of Texas, it's a beautiful drive. And mm -hmm. so I'm slightly jealous that y'all, they all <laughs> did that. Um, would y'all do that again? Was is, the, is nine hours that kind of sweet spot for driving versus flying yeah absolutely um yeah hopefully i want to go back for sure and hopefully we can grab some of the crew and we can all go up but yeah i would definitely do it again for sure oh for sure um the the drive wasn't that bad <laughs> well that's good yeah i, I know it's um it, it can seem a little off-putting especially since we're used to driving so far anyway for our gts mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get into some like pointed questions. Um, so, Jeff, we're going to toss this first one over to you. Um, mm -hmm. Off air, you mentioned that you kind of weren't happy with uh, battle tactic choices throughout the the event. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is your first full five game GT that you've had with this particular list. Um, what would you change, right? You know, coming out of this, you you played fifteen, uh, what's that, twenty five rounds, yeah, effectively. So, mm -hmm. what would you change, kind of sequencing wise, or are you going to change anything in the list to kind of fix the the battle tactic? Um, honestly, I'll just play better. I guess, <laughs> like, I mean, to be honest, like first game went well. Second game, I played beasts. I I got really thrown off in that game because I had there was a model in base contact with me. I didn't notice, and then I set up my whole like my whole thing. I set up because corn has a lot of sequencing. You need to sequence like murder lust. You need to sequence prayers. You need to like set up how everything goes. And I, I set it all up, and then I roll for murder lust, and he's like, you can't murder lust when you're in combat, can you? And I'm like, no, I can't. And the way that the, I was playing Beast of Chaos, and the way that the wing was on my Bloodthirster, and I'm looking down, I didn't see there was a model there. So that, that threw me that game. Um, I played, I don't want to get into everything that I played, but against uh, Sons, there's not a lot of tactics to do, honestly. And day two, I was just sloppy. So, I mean, the list performed really well. Um, I think I was more concerned with, like, getting my army to where it needed to be and stuff like that, which is weird, because usually as you approach an army and you approach a list, you really want to focus more on your battle tactics. I didn't. Um, but, yeah, I think I think just figuring that stuff out now is, is what I want to do. But as far as the list goes... I didn't. We're going to Slam Bell in two weeks, and I didn't change a thing. I kept it exactly the same. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, you're kind of skipping one of my questions there, but <laughs> I'll, I'll toss you another one. Um, as a tournament organizer yourself, what are you stealing from Tyler's pack? Uh, I really like um, I really like Best Tactician. It was super cool. I, I like that a lot. I liked, I do like Highlander. I don't know if I want to steal Highlander because that's kind of like Tyler's thing. Um, but those are those are two of the things. Oh, and best best table was really cool. Like a lot of people entered best table. We tried doing that that one year, mm -hmm. and uh, we only got maybe two or three entries. Uh, but it was really cool. I think I think that's a good thing to have people bring tables out and stuff like that for sure. Yeah, I think revisiting that in the future is going to be you know really cool, especially since we can build a little bit more up. For for build for you know kind of building that out, um, awesome. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Over to Joe. Um, Joe, how do you feel after twenty five rounds with the Stormcast list about using your Marathi dice? How so, my Marathi dice performed spectacularly. All right, don't let anyone try and gaslight you or trick you into thinking. Anything else. Marathi is love. Marathi is life. So, she had issues with seven inch charges. I don't know what it was, but something about that first deep strike with the Annihilators. She's like, eh, you're going to have to come up with another plan. Those 200 points, they're going to sit there. So, you know, um, and just about every game, I would put a unit of Annihilators down. 
they would fail their charge, and then they would almost always die immediately afterwards. I uh, through the tournament, I think I roll, I won, one maybe three priority rolls that were meaningful in any, any. In they influenced the game a little bit, not enough to like turn a draw into a win or a loss into a win, but they were like, oh, they kept me from getting tabled and gave me another round. So I. Uh, at round four, I got the ringer, and it was Don, beautiful person, so funny, so inviting. I was talking, I was like, hey, you know, instead of spending my weekend with Lexi on her birthday, I chose to, I chose to come down here. So he gave me, uh, he got with Tyler, and Tyler gave me ten of the Vault Wars dice, and... I don't like to assign agency to polyhedrons, but those Vault Wars dice, you are going to see them at locals, and you are going to not want to see them at locals. Uh, those dice, A, look amazing, and B, rolled so hot for me. It was crazy. Oh, hey, there they are on stream. They are, like, beautifully satin and, like, with just a little bit of texture to them. It's, I love them. Those are, those are some gorgeous dice. Um... And Joe, don't worry. We will have a salt test for them. I promise you. <laughs> no, you will not touch my dice. You will not waterboard my dice. Think of it as a as a soak. It's oh, a okay. Day. So, it's a spa. Oh, okay, day. it's a spa. Oh, it's a spa day. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. So so back to the the failing multiple seven inch charges. Yeah. Um, when choosing where you were placing your annihilators, uh, I know during the last stream that we had. You drop them behind Jeff's lines, mm -hmm. um, kind of opposite or, or past where his army is compared to where you were. So mm -hmm. you were almost like pinning him or trying to pincer him, right? Mm -hmm. When you fail your seven inch charge, how does that work, right? So are you keeping that in mind when you're dropping them down or are you just dropping and praying? So what I'm looking for places to put my annihilators on the deep strike I want it to be, if I fail this seven inch charge, are they in a position to where my opponent has to commit something that can kill them and not die on the clapback and do it in a way that pulls them out of position or pushes them not where they want to go. So I don't want to drop them necessarily in between me and my opponent's army because 90% of the time, that's where my opponent wants to go anyway. With the... Once, you know, <clears throat> when I set up my table, my opponent's like, hey, you know, what is your list doing? I'm like, look, I'm going to shoot you from 30 inches, and I'm going to drop three dudes on a 40 millimeter base seven inches away from your army, and I'm going to try and scalpel out your heroes. Most people reflexively want to kind of build a screen or a castle so I can't get behind them because that's really the worst place for annihilators to come up. You have to kind of turn around and it's normally our squishier heroes that we're going to find. Um, yeah, the squishier heroes you're going to find in the back. So when I'm setting them up, it is 90% of the time not in front of my army and as far behind my army as I can get them and ideally to one of their hammer pieces or their key pieces. So if I fail that seven inch charge, they have to move a damage piece in reverse. So long winded explanation of they do it from the back. I think that's a very concise way to, <laughs> to handle that Joe. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, unlike Jeff, you have forsaken the annihilators, uh, for Slambo, um, what was the That's, kind of the uh, the reasoning really? for that? So I wouldn't say forsaken. Um, I had so it's no secret I did not perform particularly well at Vault Wars. I uh, I won a single game against the Ringer, which I should have lost. Um, he uh, I roll up on day two. And Don set it up and is like, okay, you know, I'm playing a really easy army to kind of go into. He's like, 
Grin and Blades 12 Bolt Boys. And I was like, oh no. Not not Grin and Blades 12 Bolt Boys. I can't shoot you. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty hard counter for you as the as the ringer. Yeah. Because uh, he was like, oh, you know, I, I'd want to play Iron Jaws, but I don't want to just like run you over. And I'm like, man, I really would have preferred you played Iron Jaws and just ran me over. So he was really phoning it in. Um, I lost every priority roll that game. And there were multiple times that he could have just been like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to shoot you off the board. But he didn't. So I should have been 0 3 2. So I I wanted to set myself up in a I wanted to put myself in a position that when I go to Slambo, I'm going to get to have all the fun. So I was like five night judicators, three chariots. Like I want zero interaction. Uh I would like to never roll dice in melee cuz that's for chumps. I want to do I want to do the shooting. So that's what I picked. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think an uninteractive list that you try to uh, just destroy your opponent without any interaction is it's an awesome choice. Um, right? I, I don't feel that you are the main villain of Slambo, but that's for another night. I I refuse to. I No, I'm not a villain. <laughs> well, cool. Uh, that's that's it for what I had um, for kind of prepared. So, Jeff, any anything else that you know comes to mind? Any really fun experiences you know in game fun experiences in game um tell them about the skaven sure so yeah so i did i did play uh dude john who was playing skaven and uh he he walks up and he's like hey how do how do i beat you and i'm like i don't really know skaven i don't i don't i don't really know um take top of one i do the you know the bronze flush on the skull crushers i uh i run them in um you know get them in get their they kill their eight models get their battle tactic and he just has horrendous horrendous dice rolling and you know if i say somebody has horrendous dice rolling it's it's pretty impressive but he yeah he did not he did not roll well at all it was like lightning cannons were blowing up and like yeah, things things did not go well for him. It was it was one of those like you know how the Skaven either they either clap or they get they just destroy themselves. Um, he he did not roll well at all. It was he had a rough game. Yeah, I think it could be surmised as they either kill kill or die die. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Joe? Um, I I know you you've had kind of a let's say a more somber experience with with your games, but was there any clutch play? Did you snipe any heroes out from fifty? You know, fifty inches away or anything. Wow, I uh, I wish I could tote my uh, battle acumen, but uh, no, no, I played very, very badly, and uh, everyone that beat me, they uh, they got a well deserved win. But so my first game was against Gits. Um, dude rolls up, double reinforced unit of squigs. It's got two manglers, and I was like, mm, I've seen this before. Easy peasy. I'm gonna shoot him. He's gonna die. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it. It'll be so easy. So I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm going to take top of one, because I beat him in drops, all right? And I was like, here we go. I'm going to go first. I'm going to do a really defensive play, stay real far back, just get within 30, so my long strikes can take some pretty ineffectual shooting against some shooters and some squigs. You know, I'm not looking to get close. And uh, Joe Vucic, the, uh, the guy that ended up uh, winning the event, was he's like ah screw it full send uh runs both the manglers and the hoppers um at me and i was like well i think i know what's about to happen but i hope it doesn't happen we get to priority and he's like all right let me roll for the moon moon moves to the middle of the board and i was like oh please what's about to happen i hope to god does not happen and he wins priority and it happens so two manglers and like a unit of hoppers come flying across the board from another zip code, hit my long strikes, hit my hero package, hits my vanguard hunters, and just tables me. So going into um going into the top of two for me, I'm like, 
I have two units of Annihilators in the sky. I'm just going to run around and try and do objectives. It was differential. Uh, so I wanted some kind of points. It didn't. I knew I wasn't going to get a lot. The guy was going to table me um, almost immediately afterwards anyway. But I did manage to force through differential. I got two points and he got 18. So he did not beat me by 20. So that was pretty sick. So my first game was maybe 40 minutes long. It was it was over quick. So I was like, wow, I'm, I'm feeling pretty defeated. Let me just go take pictures. And pairings for round two come out. And I get paired into Gits again. Almost an identical list in some ways. Uh, they had the little war band where they're like, oh, yeah, we got to go like stand next to a piece of train and get like a four up ward. But other than that, they're basically the same. And that yeah, was a draw. That second game, he only had the one, the one Mangler though, right? Yeah, he only had one Mangler. That was that was Christian you played right. That was the dude that I played. First yeah, uh, Christian. Where so uh, Jeff uh, Jeff beats Christian, and then I pair into Christian round two, and I draw against Christian. So me and him, we got to talk about how much Jeff sucks, and how we're kind of envious of him playing the game, and we're not playing the game. Yeah, and how uh, I gave him my best sports, and he gave you his best sports. Yeah, I think that was a retaliatory, like, best sports yeah. play. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. <laughs> made some, for some interesting conversations on the way home, that's for sure. Yes, we did. Um, I really wish it wasn't raining so hard or we weren't so exhausted. Ooh, yeah, the ride home. It... Yeah, the, the ride home was not as fun as the ride there. That's for sure. No, we were so done. Yeah. But we... Game three, um, I go against the Stormcast Mirror, and I'm pretty confident going against Stormcast. I've played Milo so many times locally that I was like, okay, I, I'm comfortable playing against most Stormcast that I see. And somewhere in this slideshow is a picture of uh, my game against, uh, it was Matt Chance was his name. Uh there are just like three massive pieces of obscuring terrain and the buildings are so big and there's so many pieces of terrain on this board. My long strikes were just so ineffectual. They, their, their claim to fame is they killed the same unit of Vindictors twice. So go long strikes. But I think I didn't have bad games. Uh, I definitely got to spend a lot of time talking to my opponents after losing as quickly as I did. But what was a lot of fun was dinner that night. So we uh, went to Habaneros that night? Was that what it was called? Was Habaneros? Yeah, Habaneros. Yeah. Uh and we got to sit down with Levon from I think it's Gateway Gamers from St. Louis, I believe is their club. Yep. Yeah. Um Tyler uh, from Warhammer Weekly, and Dawn, uh, which was one of the TOs. So we got to sit down with, you know, a pretty a pretty big part of, like, event organization there for Missouri. And we got talking about uh, our tournaments and how we run them, and we kind of spitballed ideas back and forth. And Jeff really kind of took the lead on a lot of those conversations. Did I? Yeah. I guess I, I, guess I did. Yeah. So why don't you talk about those conversations? The one time Jeff talks. Right. I, I did talk. I smile, Spencer. Sometimes I talk, you know. You know how that goes. But, uh, yeah, I guess we were talking about, Tyler was talking about uh, the advantages of, like, player place terrain. And uh, they did they did TL place terrain. And he was, like, he was there the Friday night before. And he's, like, he was there at 1 a.m. because they had some kind of Magic the Gathering tournament. And he was saying he would do player place turn. He'd never do do TL place turn again. Mm -hmm. um, and just some discussions about like things that they did. Like they did pair uh, round four the night before, and I was like, ooh, I was like, I've seen this before, and I know how this goes. But uh, they're a great crew. Nobody dropped, so they didn't have to repair anything in the morning. So that was that was cool. And then yeah. we're just talk and we're just talking about. Um, like timing essentially for when when you'd want to vote for like table and uh and paint and stuff like that because because the one thing that happened with us is i didn't get like 
kind of my games my earlier games well my games either went to time or i was done really quick and my round three game i mean i was done really quick but i was just so exhausted at that point i didn't really have a lot of time to look at the train and see what was going on mm -hmm. didn't get this didn't get to see the armies i didn't even see the army that won i mean kit won player's choice uh, and there were some other dude that won best paint and i really would have liked to seen it but i just I, we didn't have time we had an hour for lunch so you had to do set up and eat and i mean there was cool like the nice thing about the venue is there was a firehouse subs and what was the other place there was a barbecue place yeah it was like, like smoking Moe's or smoking bobs or something yeah like literally like right next like in the same complex so that was really mm -hmm. nice to see those there but you know i think i think it'd be better if they either did like the hour and a half for lunch or they did you know after round three like set up your stuff and do the voting uh do the voting you know the morning when you come in so there's mm -hmm. you have something to look at i think would be better but they did do qr codes for the voting and stuff that's something spencer we talked about doing um but yeah a lot of a lot of cool stuff that like they did and like I do like how, like I said, how their event wanted to reward more people, kind of like we did with Best Bracket and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot of, like, I think we wanted to run, like, a similar type of experience, mm -hmm. like, like, at each event. So that was cool. Yeah. So really, from what I'm hearing is, one, overall, it was a really great experience and really well put on. Um, so I just mm -hmm. want to shout out to uh, Tyler and the rest of his crew for such an awesome event. I really wish I could have joined y'all and you know look forward to potentially going out next year mm -hmm. but one one thing that i'm getting is a sense of community kind of no matter where you go um i know y'all uh, you mentioned the gateway gamers uh mm -hmm. i actually played one of their players at the austin open a couple of years ago uh, really Anthony. yeah uh okay. it, it was a it was a wonderful experience it was you know really jovial really fun person to play with mm -hmm. and then i ran into him at uh, LVO. It was like, oh, hey, you know, good to see you. Um, and then to, to see that he was playing there and that you got to play with some of his club mates is, mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, I know Nick True was out there. He's a uh, really awesome guy. Really, really nice and really glad y'all got to meet him. But That's a tough crowd, right? Yep. Yep. He's yeah. a tough crowd member that was there playing oh, the, I... probably the a mean, a mean list, maybe? Yeah, yeah, the KO. He, we, when we had dinner the first night, he sat right across from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a musical dude. Yeah. It, so really what I'm getting is there's just an awesome sense of community and really kind of community-oriented events, right? Mm -hmm. It's not it's not like a magic, you know, uh, GP where you're mm -hmm. just trying to cram in a thousand players, go as fast as you can, trying to cut, cut to top eight as soon as you can to try to get people out the door. Mm -hmm. It seems like an experience, right? And that conversation that you had talking about, oh, how have you done this? Oh, maybe maybe we could do this. Oh, how did y'all do this? Is just all seems player focused, mm -hmm. and it's it's wonderful to see. You know, as a player and as a TO, it's that's the kind of event that we want. We want people to be talking about it and talking about the really cool stuff and how they can take that back home to where they go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a we had a really long talk about Don uh, with Don, and he was talking about like how you know like he was in high school and like you know he doesn't like he, he was like saying how you know he realized in my life like i've had a lot of acquaintances i have and had a lot of friends and i think he's only been playing for i think he said like a year maybe a year and a half mm -hmm. and he was saying that the people that he plays with now are like some of the best friends he's ever had he has the people that he'll that he'll come over have come over his house and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah it's just i mean i kind of thought you know I know it's the Texas thing. I'm like, yeah, we're the best. It's it's us. But like, I mean, we have a great community here. Don't get me wrong. But like, they were awesome. Like, I love those guys. Those guys are great. And uh, I hope we can get some of those guys down here. And I hope we can get more of our our people up there because same exact type of experience. Just they do things a little bit differently. But uh, yeah, it was it was super cool. What uh, one of the really cool things about going up there and like hanging out with these guys for two days and getting to know some of them pretty well is during award ceremony, um, everyone was so excited for everyone to get their awards, get their talk. Like, everyone was cheering. It was always applause. There was, when something got called, it was never quiet. And shout out to the TO staff, and especially the store, like uh, Metagames, 
they helped provide like so much prize support for this event. Uh, literally everyone walked away with something. Yeah, uh, there there was a point where where Tyler's like, "Has anybody not gotten anything? Please like raise your hand." Mm-hmm. And uh, the other cool thing was the store gave twenty percent off. Uh, for anybody that was at the event off of GW stuff. So that was really cool. I mean, here we do a lot more charity stuff, and charity stuff is great. But, uh, yeah, they did a lot of – they had a ton of prize support, which was really yeah. cool. And it was it was big stuff, too. Like, they were giving out FOMO boxes. They had books, objective markers, like, uh, full sets of uh, – I'm very jealous Jeff got called before me because he got, like, a big play set – of uh the vault wars dice mm. with like a leather baggie and man i really wanted those hey you got your lumineth you're happy right i love lumineth and they are totally still in the package which is not relevant to their experiences from from what i've heard joe those lumineth are not going to be allowed for very long in that house so I got home before them, and uh, they got home, and Lexi like started scouring the house looking for them, and I don't know where they're at. I, she legitimately went and hid them. She may have thrown them away. I don't know. So cool. Yeah, well, food yeah. food was really great there too. Um, oh my god! Should we, should we talk about the what was the Chinese place that we went to? It was Five Spice China. Chinese, or maybe it was Five Spice China Bar and Grill. Yeah, it wasn't the place that Tyler recommended because they were drive through only and we're like, yeah, we want to we want to sit and chill. But that place was awesome. That had the best alcoholic beverage I've ever had. What was it? A fire mango? Well, it was like it was like a, it was like a spicy fire dragon or something like that. Yeah, that place is so good. Right. Uh, so Springfield, Missouri, you know, the middest of the West, is known for cashew chicken. Which apparently is like a Chinese dish. I don't, I don't know why that's what Springfield, Missouri is known for. They're Chinese, so it's day. It's Sunday. All right, we're packing up. It's probably like four thirty, almost five o'clock. And me and Jeff are like, "Well, we're not leaving until tomorrow, so you know we got to do something." So we're like, "Hey guys, like, where can we go eat? Like, while we're here, where are you guys? Like, you need to go do this." And they're like, you got to get the cashew chicken. And me and Jeff, we're like, man, I love cashews. Like, second best nut next to pistachios. Like, let's go. So we drive to this place, and it's drive through only. And we're like, we do not want to go back to our, like, mid-hotel and <laughs> sit over some Chinese takeout boxes and try and smash some cashew chicken. So we're looking around, and we find this place. And we roll up, and there's just a couple people couple people in the drive through and we're like man do not let this be the experience so i run in and like the nicest waiter runs up and he's like how can i help you and i was like okay cool you guys are open let's do this so i go i get jeff we come in he sets us down there's like two people in this whole restaurant aside from us like a couple in the back and i think this dude probably got like 20 bucks worth of tips just from jeff and i yeah yeah he did um we're like, we need the cashew chicken. That, that we gotta have it. Uh, five dollar drinks, like five dollar cocktails. Sign me up. They yeah. were amazing. Yeah, they are. Uh, it reminded so this like spicy dragon reminded me of. See, there's Jeff. He's so happy. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of like a fruit punch Capri Sun, but with alcohol, and I was there for that. And for anyone that's wondering, cashew chicken is, uh, this is where I have to, uh, I have to kind of like downplay and maybe rain on Missouri. Uh, cashew chicken is mid at best. It's, uh, it's fried chicken and like peanut gravy. Yeah. It was cashew sprinkled on it. I mean, it was good, but like, it is more of a gravy than a sauce, which I thought was weird. Oh yeah. Definitely a gravy. Like I wasn't expecting like cashew gravy it, like i said it was good i ate it all but but uh yeah it was it was not what i was expecting it's like a it was like a a nutty salty gravy yeah yeah it was weird it was good though it was well, it wasn't bad it wasn't bad but definitely a nutty salty gravy yeah all right so i'm, I'm gonna apologize for them firstly sorry springfield missouri for their 
crimes against your cashew chicken. Um, I, I think we can chalk it up to potentially just a, just an off night, just an off restaurant. It may not be the best they had to offer. The question is, is if you, if you were back in Springfield and you were at Long's Asian Diner, which is the, supposedly the creator, the inventor of cashew chicken, would you get it again? Would you try it again? Jeff, I'm going to let you lead on this one. At a, at a different restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, I tried, I tried a different place for sure. I don't know. So, Joe's, Joe's like, no. Okay, so here's my thing with cashew chicken, all right? Cashews taste the way they do, and this gravy was very cashewy. So I don't know how you could enhance cashew gravy in a way that could elevate it above what we had. I I don't know if we reached the mountain, but damned if we weren't close to the summit on cashew chicken. Yeah, well, they they did have like banners for like best cashew chicken in Missouri, but like they were, I did notice they were older. Specifically, twenty seventeen. Is that, that what stuck I, out I, to me? Yeah, I thought that was twenty seventeen. So yeah, like maybe maybe they're like they're like down. But the other place that we went to that Tyler recommended, there was there was a huge line at that drive through. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I, don't know. I, I see there's it. a question in chat. Yeah, so let's get into it. Um, so uh, Govrek is one of the players that we have here in town um, and comes to us with a question of, as a tournament organizer, how do you approach uh, ensuring that people that are more introverted feel a part of the community? Uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll, I'll toss that one to you, um, considering you've done quite a bit of work with the 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 Age of Sigmar League and the events here in town. Yeah, so normally, like, when I do a league and I do it, and you, if you're going to do a league, you're going to do a league right. If you're organizing it, you're, you should not you should not be playing in that in that event, basically. So what, what I've always tried to do is match, like, have new people come in and just match games. Like, hey, like, how you doing? What's your name? You know, what are you playing? Hey, this is so-and-so. You want to give him a game you guys can play? Um, but yeah, we, we're always looking for ways to, to get those people into the community. It's a little bit harder to do, I think, at a GT. Um, but yeah, I think local events and stuff like that are great for to get people into the community. And we're always looking at ways to uh, to bolster the community and add people and get more people in and enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Joe, any, any thoughts? Yeah, so specifically that... So it was weird, all right? So we talked about, uh, and you know, we talked with Tyler and them about how getting people out to their first GT was a little hard, uh, but everyone had like a really good experience. I think maybe rephrasing those conversations into how do we draw them into it and not once they take that leap to sign up, then we ensure they have a good experience. But maybe if we start from the, okay, how do we get the new people at these GTs and ensure they have a good conversation or a good experience might be something that's seriously worth considering because we have a large community, but are we growing our community in like a meaningful way? You know, that might be something we uh, actively consider. Yeah, I think... I think the uh, the other thing too, and it's kind of the way that he had this set up, right? And it's kind of like what we tried to do with uh, with Teeth Taker is just mm-hmm. have other things there. Like, I mean, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter how good you are at the game. Like, mm-hmm. you're not gonna win your you you. I'm not gonna say you're not gonna win your first GT. You're probably not gonna win your first GT. So having other stuff at those events to do that for people, like let there be like, oh, you can kill all the monsters or you can win like this or, hey, you're not, I know you're 0-3 right now, but we're doing best bracket so you can still, you know, be the best, you know, 1-4 and four player or whatever. So I think I think that's a way that I've kind of approached it as well um, is just having more things to do. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about, hey, who paints the best? Hey, who plays the best? Hey, who's who's the best social person? Mm-hmm. It's also like I just want to get more people's names called and get more people up front and get more people involved. That's that's always my primary goal when I run an event. Mm-hmm. Is just involve it like cast the widest net and involve the you know the biggest amount of people as possible. Um. So I believe it was hard mode was the category. Uh, the list that had the most. 
I don't want to say like narrative feel to it, but the list that captured the best feel of an army. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it was just the most off meta list. Essentially, is what it was. Was it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, what? What are you? What are you playing? That's not like, like quote like good in the meta right now. Like, and I mean the way that they did it is they would just look at those. They would look at all the lists that came in and kind of decided what would be hard mode and what wouldn't be. Uh -huh. That's a good way too. Just any anything like that where you can just encourage you know people to participate and do different things is. Uh, we had that conversation, didn't we, Jeff? When we were we were talking mm -hmm. about up and coming smash, we definitely want to do our teeth thing again. But how do we, how do we reward players? Because there's only going to be a couple five O's. There's mm -hmm. only going to be one, you know, like best painted one player choice. Um. So, how do we get players to? engage and win and compete through all levels of the scoring mm -hmm. bracket so highlander was fun teeth is fun and i see we're getting called out new players and introverts are definitely two different things yeah. um so so i i actually have some thoughts on this um yeah so the first reaction to that kind of question is is like well what what would you like us to do right and i think that kind of highlights the potential issue that an introvert might have is they may not be comfortable voicing that or be comfortable making that request and so mm -hmm. i think going back to the the to chair it requires you to be active right it requires you to be aware um, of players that may be more introverted than others learn how to read body language that sort of thing and proactively reach out to them talk to them one-on-one -on -one. um I know a lot of introverts and they generally respond really well to one-on-one -on -one conversations, maybe not two to three, four to five people conversations, but one-on-one -on -one is great. And you can work with that and start including them from there, right? So if, if you have someone that is more introverted, that uh, has a really interesting idea about a particular uh, game, game thing, ask them to, if they would feel comfortable writing something up right start trying to get them involved in what might be seen as less active in front of people but still active in the community mm -hmm. right and so i think from my standpoint that's what i would like to focus on you know as a as an event organizer is how to bring those people into the fold find those you know those wallflowers and just try to get them off the wall a little bit and it's not necessarily to to say that you can't be um, secluded you know we all need that that time but if there's anything that i can do you know personally regardless if it's my event if there's anything that i can do to make your your day a little bit better i'm going to try and so i think from from that perspective really focusing on making a one-on-one -on -one connection with the person finding out what what really they enjoy about this game if it's about painting cool hey post some painting tips post some post some questions and just try to start getting them involved to where it's it starts as one-on-one -on -one. yeah and, and i mean that's it. that's why i don't like when i run leagues that's why i don't play because yeah. i want to i want to watch and see and I, I try to go out of my way to talk to everybody and make sure everybody's having a good time mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah um i do want to do a quick shout out i know at uh, our sister club slambo in san antonio um for a long time when they do nights where they have newer players showing up they have uh, basically a, an attendant for the club that is there and actively pairing people. And it's like, hey, uh, you're new? Great. Um, I know Jimmy is a great, um, fun opponent to play, really nice, really interested in having a great time playing the game. Sure, he might he might smash your face in incidentally with his giants, but that's not what he's here for. He's here to make sure that you have a good time regardless of what happens. And I think as event organizers that kind of active work is really important so you know hats off to the san antonio and hats off to you jeff thanks um there's another question a uh, follow-up question from govrek uh, what local events would be good for new players in austin to attend storm the castle um that's if i had to if i had to recommend a local event uh, i would say storm the castle I've gone to the last two Stormy Castles at Game Castle, and it 
It sounds kind of bad to say it, but a lot of the participants have been a little softer in terms of list building. Uh, there's definitely a good chance that you're going to get one of the Game Castle local players, and their lists are not hyper-refined, so there's a good chance that newer players are going to get a ch um, get to experience an entire game of Age of Sigmar with the majority of their models on the table. They will get to have all of the interactions. Um, what's, how, what's the best way to say it? Um, we build our lists with interactions or combos in mind that we want to do on our own lists. And a good opponent, if it's a particularly powerful combo, is going to scalpel that out very quickly. Um, with a lot of these opponents at Game Castle, they're just looking to sling dice, have a good time, play, you know, five rounds of AOS with someone new. You're going to get to do what your list wants to do. You're going to see and experience what their list wants to do. So that's what I'd recommend. Yeah. I mean, I, I and honestly, I, I'll call myself out here. I think I need to do a better job and making sure more of those events are available like maybe mm -hmm. once every quarter but yeah we yeah we don't we don't like yeah i'd Castle will be the best best place to go that's where like a lot of the newer players have been playing and stuff like that but yeah i think mm -hmm. i think we need to do a better job of having more like beginner friendly events for sure mm -hmm. that's yeah. a good that's, that's a good thing to, to take mm -hmm. note of um I, I do want to call out the the phrasing of that is also really important it's an event Right, mm -hmm. and and that's the phrasing that Gover accused, and that's the phrasing we're using here. Having a an event versus having a tournament um, automatically implies that it is different than a hyper competitive focus tournament where there are people gunning for the top. You're going to see armies that will potentially table you in two turns that are for some people relatively unfun to play against. Mm -hmm. um, but taking a step back and just focusing on events, narrative events, I think, are something that we as a community could could do more of. And it's not necessarily in place of that tournament style, but I, I really do think that the Path to Glory type of game works really well in a small group. Take take four friends, take a Grand Alliance each. Cool. Go 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 run a Path to Glory League for for three months, and I think that you get that. It scratches that itch of I want something to where I'm more immersed in the game, and I think as someone uh, who could be potentially more focused on the the strategy, the winning, the losing, the, the potential uh, you know tournament style thinking, mm -hmm. slowing down, focusing on those other things is really beneficial to not only my enjoyment of the game but also just mental health as well. So yeah. I think. I think narrative focused things are going to be you know, very paramount for for events moving forward with uh the onset of fourth edition potentially coming next year mm -hmm. i think that's going to be a great opportunity but i don't think that we should wait until then to do yeah. that and i don't think I, the other thing i'll say too is I don't, I don't necessarily think those events um need to be games of age of sigmar like I, I, you know, I think we can do painting nights. We could do hobby nights and stuff like that. And I think those mm -hmm. are those are those are things too that uh, I, haven't, I haven't had a lot of time for honestly. Like it, the Path to Glory last one we ran was like a hundred people, and it just the size that we have and the people that we get, it just it gets really unwieldy. It gets really hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, there's other things we could do. We can you know go play and then go out for dinner or something and hang out. And, yeah. But yeah, there's, okay. there's, I think there's other things to do besides just playing the game to welcome other people in. Maybe one of these uh, upcoming months at Wonka is we do like a off-meta event where we do two rounds and then uh, kind of late lunch with everyone. Yeah, well, I like that we did that one. We did the doubles and we switched everybody. Every mm -hmm. every round was fun. I thought that was cool. And I know, I know some people in the community were thinking about doing like a big like mass battle thing where it's just two sides and one like giant long table and like a siege so that'd be pretty cool too honestly we should probably do another doubles event soon uh we had a lot of new people come out a lot of new faces during that event mm -hmm. we saw spouses yeah we did as well that. so you know we got the whole family out for those yep so right doubles 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 <laughs> double turn
at the doubles. <laughs> awesome. So, but yeah, I think uh, I think we've kind of exhausted everything that we could talk about for not everything. There, yeah, there's still plenty that we could talk about. Um, I could talk about. Ah, no, we're not gonna do it. Let's so go I'm gonna hand it over to you, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna t- turn to the crowd in the chair, uh, Chad. If you want to go ahead and switch over uh, the transformation that we have here, um, let's talk future. Right. This is a great recap. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Joe, for being so candid and open um, and having this conversation with us. But let's talk future. Um, what event is coming up that we have right now? Jeff, I think, you know, you both and both you and Joe said it earlier. Yep. What do we got next weekend? Mm-hmm. Slam GT. That's right. Our worst tacos in Texas. But uh, but we love our brothers. So they're great. They're great guys. Yeah, it's a, it's a great club. It's going to be a great time. We do have the Slambo GT list review that's going to be happening live on Friday night. I have uh, a tentative schedule and format that I think that's going to really be quick, digestible, and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we don't enjoy our five-hour long slogs of running through lists, but I think we could all use a shorter stream, especially yeah. me, because I have to paint an entire army by then, mm-hmm. but that's not important. Um, so I do want to call that out. Uh, we're going to have a few of us online chatting about the event uh, coming up. If you are in the area or can get here, there are tickets still available. Um, message us on Twitch, Twitter, what have you. We will get you in touch with who you need to, to mm-hmm. talk to about that. Um, but we're going to be reviewing the 60-some-odd uh, players that we have. Um, I have a really cool little chart that I threw together. Um, thanks to Chris C. from Houston and Ben Riddle, also from Houston. Um, Binder Man. Binder Man. Binder Man and Boot Man, um, <laughs> with some some data that I think is going to be really fun to take a look at. We've got the oh ho, ho. hey, did you know that we have a bot in chat? Yeah, boo the bot, boo the bot. Wait, no, what's the bot have to say? Nope, bot's gone. <laughs> Damn it! All right, fine, no bot for us. <laughs> um, but uh, percentage chance of going first based on how many drops you have. Um, and it's not overall; it's within the event. So I think. We're going to have some really good conversations. Uh, we're going to have some really good uh, some jokes. Don't worry. It's going to be still funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we've got that coming up this weekend. And then next week, uh, I do want to just kind of preemptively say, hey, we have a little spooky game coming up that Tuesday evening, a little Halloween game. So be sure to join us for that as well. Uh, Jeff, anything else before we sign off? No, I think we got we hit everything. Mm-hmm. We uh, I took Joe to an event and made him turn to the dark side. I did sad. not. I am not a villain. <laughs> I am. I refuse to be on the shit list. <laughs> uh, Joe, anything else other than shit list? Um, yeah. So please come join us Friday. Um, this will be a fun stream. We're gonna try and get some new personalities on here. Uh, not be a three-hour list review. Ugh. And for our spooky game. Please come and watch that as well. It's going to be more of a themed game, so it's not going to be a very hyper uh, competitive focus game. It's going to be us hanging out on stream in costumes, talking about, you know, a fun thematic game. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hope to see you Friday night and hope to see you Tuesday evening as well. Catch us online at twitch.tv slash weirdcast YouTube. Search for DeWeirdCast and check us out on Twitter as well. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe coming soon. Thanks so much, and until next time, may your dice rolls be sixes, y'all. Have a good night. Bye, all Love you guys. Have a good night.